Hey, what's going on? It's your girl, Mickey Boo, a.k.a. S'mores. You know, my real name is Sissy, meaning God is abundance. God is my oath. Told you guys that I just walked into that now. I'm embracing that. So I'm getting comfortable with saying that. Um, moms, how are we feeling? How are we doing? I hope that we, we're great. We embrace in the moment. We're striving to be our best so that we can reflect our best. Um, all of that good stuff. So I want this, I want to speak about mind on lock, heart on lock body on lock right so again i'm still on my journey and i'm going through things and here's another epiphany that i had so when you get rooted into god he works in portions he works in steps so the more you give him, the more he give you. Or even when you give him some time, he'll give you some time, right? Um, when you take time to learn him, he learns you. He gives you what you need. All of that good stuff. Step by step by step by step by step. It's never too much. Um, sometimes I get bored and I be looking for a word. I be hungry for the word. Um, you know, and it just comes with experiences. Um, I'm seeing so far as well, you know, those lessons. So I realized that the first thing that I did was had to get my mind on lock. I had to get to a point where now I didn't know this until now that certain things couldn't affect me in certain parts of my body because God has now tuned into that and put it on lock, even my heart and my body. So once you get your mind on lock, can't nobody manipulate you. They probably can lie to you, but you will put two and two together. You won't be so focused on things that don't positively serve you. You won't get so wrapped up in things uh, that hurt you or don't make you feel good. And that's the same with your heart. See, once you once you get in tune mentally with how not to worry and how not to stress and uh, how not to overthink things, then you get in your mind a lot. You're, you're gaining control over your mind and not. Letting your mind control you by the things that it has endured or seen or processed. So then with your heart, once God got your heart, you know not to just let anybody in your heart again. You know not to let anybody taint your heart again or crush your heart or stab your heart again. You like, oh no, you might, once you break down your barriers in order for God to come in, you begin to build a different kind of barrier, a different kind of wall. I like to say this wall, instead of it being steel and brick, this is more like a trans, um, what is it called? Um, like a translucent, like a um, transparent, like you can see through this wall. God can still see your heart, but it's more like a spiritual guard where uh, somebody might try to come into your life and, and, they, and they might not act or conduct themselves as you do, as you have been. Or as you stepping into your new self. And see, <clears throat> I say that because I had a situation where somebody came into my life. And, you know, we pretty much was like twins. You know, we're a uh, positive affirmation in each other. That's not a word. We was giving each other positive affirmations. We was talking. We was connecting. We were keeping in communication on a constant basis. But I kept feeling like something else was going on. Boom, something else was really going on. But I see how that situation could have taunted me, tainted me, pushed me back in the shell, and undeniably hurt me, which could have caused me to hurt everybody around me, many family, friends, children, everybody. And so since I had my mind on lock, my heart on lock, and was able to keep my body on ching ching lock, that person could not infiltrate or destroy what I had already had been building myself to be. So 
I like to say that in the process of you being on your journey and um, having God with you, uh, I, I didn't get this out of the Bible. This is, was a real life experience. Uh, and I say that to say because, you know, people, how do you know or how did you find out or how did you know how to conduct yourself? But it goes back to how you respond to different situations. It's all about your reaction that, oh, what you putting out. You know what I'm saying? So once, you know, as I'm on this journey and I'm learning these new th things and how to filter myself, I learned that. You know, it's not for me to negatively respond to what has just occurred. It's more like, um, you know, again, we're not even holy. And even when we say we give ourselves to God, we haven't even fully committed it to that, to where we are sin free, which nobody's sin free. And, you know, there's a point where they say Jesus died for our sins. And everything is already written and our footsteps are already divine and we already, God already knows what we're going to do before we do it. So why would I put my trust and my faith that a human being would be so upright and so just divinely gifted for me? I don't know. God might make somebody be like that. But I'm just saying in reality, uh, the heart might be good. The soul might be good, but our flesh make mistakes. Even if it's a, a expectation, uh, uh, us ex expecting a person to be on time for a date and they can't make it, that hurts our feelings. When we um, when we put our trust into somebody and something old from the past come up or something new, it people have ways of affecting us. So what I'm trying to say is, um, at the end of the day. Had I not been rooted, and let me take the rooted word out of it, because that sounds more like church. And I'm, and we're not coming from a church base. We're coming from experiences and God's teaching. Um, so for me, putting my mind, my heart, and my body on lock, in a, in, in, in a with a spiritual guard, I was able to still keep all of me all of my sanity, keeping my emotions out of the equation. While we're talking about emotions, let me elaborate on emotions again, because we have different ways to how we perceive things. And sometimes somebody might have put it out there and you might have missed it. And this time you might get it. So um, it's very important that we are not wrapped in our emotions. Our emotions causes us to react. I'm not saying be emotionless and careless, but I'm kind of saying that at the same time. See, in the world, it seems as though we do stuff backwards and it work. But when you think you're doing it the right way, it don't work. And that's because the simple things we think are simple or should be simple are really not simple. But the things that we think are hard are the things that's really simple. There's a lot of... Um, opposites going on around here is what I see in my life and so I'm what I'm trying to say is it's it, when you have emotions sometimes they give you a guideline of letting you know how you feel it's good to know how you feel don't get me wrong but once you step more into your spiritual growth you realize that your emotions is the root of a lot of <clears throat> excuse me, problems or the root of your massive reactions. Um, I say I, personally for me, I had to step out of my emotions and stop looking at things in an emotional state. You can't let your anger speak for you. You can't let uh, googly eyes speak for you. <laughs> which is love because love can be blind. Um, and I'm saying that for another human. I'm not saying that for God. Um, you, you can't be overly excited because sometimes we get excited about things that we want to do and it's something that we shouldn't do. Um, whatever your emotions is, be aware of that emotion and also uh, take time 
to decide what you want to do in and out of that emotion. If you're going through a situation with your mate, for a prime example, I wouldn't make a decision in a heated moment, and I'm not trying to speak negative. I'm just saying I would wait till the next morning before I decide uh, how I should react to a situation give yourself time to think and the reason why i use that as an example is because that's mostly what we go through but for those who are having an upright great relationship maybe say maybe somebody proposed to you um that's another excitement you know where you guys been on this journey you know the pros and the cons so you know make your decision based off that too pros and cons um Again, people process things differently. So I don't want to say something and mean something else. You only know, so you have to figure it out. I'm not on here trying to prophesize or guess the future or guess who you are on the other side of the screen. I might look back at this just for some self reevaluation for me, I'm a, a new situation. What I'm saying is weigh your pros and cons listen to your emotions know your emotions so that you can know how to respond in different moments in different situations or in different circumstances that may come about it's simple just pay attention to you the inner you so that what's ever in you the right you so the proper thing can come out we want to be proper i don't want to say we want to be perfect I'm not trying to say we want to be saved and sanctified. I'm not saying none of that. But in order for world peace to come about, it takes a lot of self-reflection in every individual self that's on this earth in order for us to start becoming to be on one accord. And that is to love. There is no other thing that we want more in the world than love. And in order to see, begin to feel, begin to notice, begin to dwell in, have peace with, we have to self-reflect. We have to go to self. That's it for me. That's all. It's your girl, Mickey Boo, a.k.a. S'mores, which is short for Sissy. And my last name, and y'all don't need all that. But anyway, um, make sure y'all stay tuned in. Thank you so much for taking the time out to listen to this. I hope that this helped in some kind of way. Um, it's all about self-reflection and I'm just, this is a part of my journey. I told y'all I give it to you raw from back then to now. This is where I'm at. So everything I talk about is coming from me and things that I've been through and epiphanies that I have, lessons that I'm learning. Good night. Catch you later. Bye.